Welcome to Lesson 8D, Major Head Losses, Laminar. In this lesson, we'll discuss the difference between so-called major losses and minor losses in pipes. We'll derive an equation for the Darcy friction factor for fully developed laminar pipe flow. And we'll do an example problem to show how to apply this equation. First, let's look at the terminology of major and minor losses. Major losses are those associated with long, straight sections of pipe, so flow where the length is much longer than the diameter, and the flow is fully developed. We use the same terminology even if the pipe is tilted. We use the notation HL comma major for these major losses. This is our HL from previous lessons, so we'll use the same equation as we had for HL, namely our workhorse equation, HL major is F L over D, V squared over 2G. This equation replaces what we used to call HL. From now on, we'll use HL major to mean what we used to call HL. Minor losses are those associated with everything else in the pipe system, such as fittings, valves, elbows, T's, inlet or entrance regions, where the flow is not yet fully developed, and outflows, depending on how we define our control volume. Note that despite the terminology, major losses are not necessarily larger than minor losses. This is just the terminology that people use. Major losses for fully developed pipe flow sections and minor losses for everything else. We use the notation HL minor for minor losses and HL major for major losses. In the head form of the energy equation, we use HL total, which is the sum of HL major plus HL minor. So we'll get used to using this from now on. And also everywhere we had an HL in the previous lessons, these losses are now major losses. But from now on, we'll include major and minor losses in HL total. Let's deal with major losses first. Quick review, why do we need to generate an equation for Darcy friction factor? Well, as you will recall from previous lessons, for fully developed pipe flow, we have expressions for delta P and HL for the irreversible losses in a fully developed section of pipe. Note that we're now using this new notation. And this is now our workhorse equation for these major losses. We also showed from dimensional analysis that F is a function of Reynolds number and epsilon over D. In this lesson, we'll deal with laminar flow. And in the next lesson, we'll deal with turbulent flow. For laminar flow, the non-dimensional roughness parameter epsilon over D is not important. So Darcy friction factor F is a function of Reynolds number only. For laminar flow, we can derive F analytically for fully developed laminar pipe flow. We start with this velocity profile that you've seen before. We're talking about a round pipe with diameter D, or radius capital R, where R is the radial component from the center line, and the velocity profile is parabolic. As we showed previously, shear stress at the wall is proportional to the slope of U of R at the wall. We had written tau W equal mu times the absolute value of du dr. Well, we can easily differentiate this and get mu absolute value of 2v, negative 2r, from differentiating this over capital R squared, which reduces to 4 mu v over r at the wall, where r equal capital R, since this shear stress is acting at the wall of the pipe. We usually work with diameter rather than radius, so tau is 4 mu v divided by d over 2, which is 8 mu v over d. Darcy friction factor F is 8 tau W over rho V squared, so plugging this in for tau W gives F equal 64 mu over rho V D. And everyone should recognize by now that this is 1 over Reynolds number. Thus, F equals 64 over Reynolds number for fully developed laminar pipe flow for a round pipe. So this is the equation for Darcy friction factor that we'll use anytime we encounter long straight sections of pipe where the flow is laminar. So we use this with HL major in our workhorse expression in the energy equation. We'll do an example to illustrate this. Let's consider fully developed laminar pipe flow where water at 20 degrees is pumped by a small aquarium pump from a low tank to an upper tank. There's an elevation difference delta Z. And we're given these parameters, pipe diameter, pipe length. Note that pipe length includes all the long straight sections of pipe. This is delta Z, and this is V dot. 
We're also given the irreversible head losses from the inlet here, the outlet here, and the elbows. That total is estimated to be 0.112 meters. This is what we're calling now HL minor. For now, I give these to you, but later on you'll be able to estimate HL minor for problems like this. Instead of talking about a shaft for the pump, we have a pump motor assembly, and we plug this into the electrical outlet. The efficiency of the pump motor assembly is given. We'll call that eta sub pump motor. It includes the inefficiencies of both the pump and the motor that drives the pump. And we're asked to calculate the electrical power in watts that must be delivered to the pump motor in order to pump the water at the given flow conditions. This is very typical of the type of problems that we'll be able to solve now. Before I pick a control volume, I want to get some of these variables into standard SI units to help with our algebra later. V dot is 2.06 liters per minute. I multiply by a unity conversion ratio. A meter cubed is 1,000 liters. And one minute is 60 seconds. This gives us 3.43333 times 10 to the minus 5 meter cubed per second. I also want to calculate average speed through the pipe, which by the way is the same through the whole pipe because we have one pipe diameter. If the pipe were larger or smaller in one of these sections, we would have to deal with each section individually. But here we can combine them all into one length, and there's only one diameter, so there's one average flow speed, which is equal to v dot over a, or 4 v dot over pi d squared. I plug in my volume flow rate and the pipe diameter to get the average speed. We'll use this value in our calculations. Now let's analyze the problem. The first step is to pick a wise control volume. Again, this is a very important step. For this problem, it makes sense to pick the control volume inlet just below the surface at 1. We want to cut through this electrical wire, and then our outlet will be just below surface 2. So this is a wise control volume. Now we write our energy equation in head form, P1 over rho g plus alpha 1 V1 squared over 2 g plus Z1 plus the useful head provided by the pump equal P2 over rho g plus alpha 2 V2 squared over 2 g plus Z2 plus the head extracted by the turbine plus HL total. Where this is the same equation we had previously, except I'm now using HL total instead of L, since we will consider both major and minor losses. We'll do this from now on. Let's examine the terms. By our choice of control volume, P1 is P atmosphere, and P2 is P atmosphere, so these two terms cancel. We also know that since we picked a wise control volume, the average speed at the inlet is negligibly small, assuming that this is a large tank. The same is true at the outlet. So, these two terms, V1 and V2, go to zero. Keep in mind that V1 and V2 are not the same as V which is the average speed through the pipe. This is the speed at the inlet and at the outlet, which are negligibly small. We do have a change of elevation, and we do have a pump, but there's no turbine in this problem. And as we wrote previously, HL total is HL major plus HL minor. We solve this equation for H pump U, the useful head delivered to the fluid. It's equal to Z2 minus Z1 plus HL minor plus HL major. I'll call this equation 1. We know this elevation difference, and we were given HL minor. Later on in the course, we'll be able to calculate this ourselves. And now we use our workhorse equation for HL major. That is, HL major is FL over D, V squared over 2G. In this lesson, we're talking about laminar flow. So F is 64 over Reynolds number. So HL major is thus 64 over Reynolds number, L over D, v squared over 2g, where all I've done is plug in 64 over Reynolds number in this equation for HL major. Well, Reynolds number is rho vd over mu, so HL major turns out to be 32 mu lv over rho gd squared, and I'll call that equation 2. We're asked for the electrical power supplied to the pump. We'll call this w dot electric. And if you go back to a previous lesson, we defined pump efficiency this way, where now we're talking about the pump and the motor combination, and this is the electrical power, not just the shaft power. Since we have V dot, M dot is rho V dot. So this is the equation we'll use for W dot electric. I'll call that equation 3. We plug equation 1 and equation 2 into equation 3 to get our final expression for W dot electric. W dot electric is rho V dot G 
over eta of the pump motor times the quantity Z2 minus Z1 plus HL minor plus HL major, which comes from equation 2. This is our answer in variable form. We were given everything in this problem, including rho and mu. We can find those for water at 20 degrees C. Now we plug in the numbers to get our answer. Rho, V dot, G, eta. Remembering that any time you use an efficiency in an equation, you have to convert from percentage times in brackets Z2 minus Z1 plus the given value of HL minor mu L V over rho G D squared. Close brackets. Note that this is one long equation. This multiplied by these terms in brackets and then unity conversion factors. Newton second squared per kilogram meter and a watt is a Newton meter per second. You can verify that all the units in these terms become meters which agrees with the other two terms and then these unity conversion ratios combine with these units to give watts as our answer. Our final result is 1.94 watts. I'll make a few comments here. This is a lot of calculations on a calculator so I highly recommend that you put things like this into Excel or other software so that you don't make calculator mistakes. Always be careful with units and I wanted to mention what the pump is actually doing. These terms in brackets are H pump U, the useful head delivered by the pump to the fluid. So what does the pump do? It raises the elevation of the liquid, it overcomes minor losses, and it overcomes major losses. So after all that work and analysis, we predict the electrical power required for the pump to pump water at the given volume flow rate through this pipe system. Problem is that this is wrong. So I asked the students, what did I do wrong? Did you make a calculator error, dude? No, I checked everything with software. Are you sure the flow is laminar? Ah, good thinking, BJ. Let's check. We assumed laminar flow. Is it really laminar? We'll check Reynolds number to see. This is a critical step to check RE to see if the flow is laminar. Reynolds number is rho VD over mu. So we plug in rho V, D, and mu and we get 4187. Our Reynolds number is greater than 4000, therefore this flow is turbulent. So our calculations are wrong. Bummer, dude. You did it wrong on purpose, didn't you, Professor Simbala? Yes, because you'll learn more this way. What do we do? We must repeat the analysis, but for turbulent flow. We'll do this in the next lesson, where I'll show you equations for F, the Darcy friction factor, for turbulent pipe flow. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.